what's going on everybody welcome to another live stream um, today we are going to be taking a look at this Raspberry Pi and we are going to be converting this Raspberry Pi into a Murma server which is the server for Mumble uh, so we are going to be turning this Pi into a nice voice com server shout outs to Mr. T-Ball who was kind enough to give me this Raspberry Pi um, this is a Model B although this tutorial will work with any model Raspberry Pi so what you are going to need for this, if you want to try this at home, is you are going to need a Raspberry Pi. Like I say, this one's a Model B, although any will do. You will need a SD card. This is a 16 gig one, although you need 4 gig or above, if I recall. You are going to need some sort of media card reader. Um, so this will allow you to put the SD card in and get the image onto the SD card. Now, I'm going to start this from scratch and assume that you've just bought a Pi and you've just came home and took it out of the box and you've got a blank SD card and you're going to do the, we're going to do the whole thing from start to finish um, and we're going to do a few extra things such as giving the Pi a static IP address, setting it so it automatically launches Murma on startup and a couple of other little bits and bobs. Okay then, so to begin with, we are going to get our... SD card which is it's currently got stuff on it but I'm going to blank it for the sake of this tutorial and we're going to put it into our card reader and then I'm going to plug it into my PC as you can see there that's just lit up and we're going to switch over from non first person mode now so you can see here that it's just it's popped up with some stuff on it but because I'm a badass we're just going to delete it like that and we're going to start all over again from scratch so, what you want to be doing is you want to be heading over to raspberrypi.org slash downloads. The link for that is in the description if you're too lazy to type this in. Now, what you want to be downloading is you want to be downloading Noobs, which stands for uh, New Out of the Box Operating... Yeah, New Out of the Box something or other. Where is it? There we go. New Out of the Box Software. There we go. Um... And we are going to download the zip of noobs. So we left click on that and it starts downloading wonderfully in the background. Um, and in order to format our SD card, we are going to download SD Formatter 4, which I already have installed on my PC, but you would go to Downloads Formatter 4 and you would download it from here and then you would install it. Okay then, well, Noobs is busy downloading here, but since I've already downloaded it, we are going to go into our Downloads folder. Uh, date modified, so there we have Noobs, and we're going to run the setup for SD Formatter, and we're going to pretend to install this, because I've already got it installed. We're going to go Next. You would press Install and press Next, 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 Next. So, we're going to assume that you've installed SD Formatter because you are a wizard and you know how to install things. So we're going to go SD Formatter, and this is what it looks like when you run it. So, <coughs> what you should do is, you should press Option, Quick Format, Adjust Size, Format Size Adjustment is on. Because if you've noticed, that's a 16 gig card, but it's only detected it as being 780 meg. So, volume label, uh, we're going to call it SD format. Okay. Do not remove. So, it's formatting the drive, and it's went, oh, it's actually 16 gig. Um, so, that's wonderful. So, we now have a formatted SD card. So now when we go back in here and we go onto G, which is my SD card, we can see it's now empty. Um, and yeah, so now we have noobs, which we just downloaded, which is a zip file. So we open this up and then we drag it all onto the SD card. So... This takes a little while. Obviously, this varies depending on the size of your SD card. So, this takes a few minutes. So, what we will do is we will use the wonders of the internet to speed this process up. 
Now that the files are copied over, uh, you probably will notice that there's an instructions readme here, but you don't really need to read it as I've already read it for you. So you can now close down the noobs archive and you have your SD card with all of the files on it. So switching back into first person mode, we can now take the SD card out and we can plug this into our Pi. So if we turn the Pi over, we can see that I'm putting it in the wrong way. So that goes in there nicely. Um, and we can plug the rest of the stuff into the Pi. So for the purposes of this, I have a very budget tablet keyboard, which will go very nicely as a keyboard for typing things into the Pi. We will need an Ethernet cable, which will give our Pi access to the Internet. We will need a, either an HDMI or an RCA, which is the old SCART type connector, for accessing the video. So there's HDMI, there's RCA. I'm actually using RCA for the purpose of this tutorial, and the reason for that is that I have an RCA converter which will allow me to show you what the Pi, well, basically, it'll allow me to put the Pi's screen into my overlay. And last but not least, we need a micro USB cable, which in this case is a micro USB um, cell phone charger. So we can put all this in, and then if I get it the right way, Nope, wrong way again. And there we go, the Pi is alive. So now that we have everything we need in the Pi, we can, the Pi doesn't have a power switch, it automatically turns on when you give it power. So what's left now is to bring up the screen of the Pi. Now, when you first start the Pi, it'll try and work out which output, which video output is the actual correct one. Um, and sometimes, like this black box that you can see on the right hand side is what the Pi is outputting to. Now, I think by default it picks HDMI, but what you can do is you can press the numbers on the keyboard, either one, two, three, or four, Oh, I just pressed four there, and that has brought up the display. Now, just as an example, if you pressed one, that would be HDMI. If you press two, that is HDMI in safe mode. If you press three, that is uh, RCA for PAL. And if you press four, that is an RCA for NTSC. So as you can see on the right here, uh, NTSC is probably the one that we want. So we are going to say yes by pressing enter. And here we have our different options. Um, if you have less options than this, it's probably because you haven't connected it to the internet. But as I have, then I have all of these wonderful options. So I'm going to press spacebar on this, which will highlight Raspbian, which is the flavor of Linux that we want to install. From here, I will press I, which means install. Warning, this will install the operating system. All data on the SD card will be overwritten, including any OSs that are already installed. So we press enter to say yes. So this now brings us to where we can see um, the operating system is being installed. This can take some time, which varies on the speed of your SD card and stuff like that. But all you have to do is pretty much sit back and do nothing and wait for it to uh, wait for it to install, really. So I'd like to say in the meantime, if you like this video, if you learned something from this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, if you know someone with a Raspberry Pi and you know someone who likes to host little servers and do cool things, by all means, share this video with them. So once again, I am going to use the wonders of the internet um, in order to speed things up and we'll come back to this once it's finished installing. Okay, so the operating system has now been installed successfully, as you can see. So we will press Enter, 
and then that will reboot the Pi. So, as you can see now, the Pi will be loading the latest version of Raspbian we've just installed. It takes about a minute for it to boot up fully. Okay, so while this is busy loading up, I'll explain what we're about to do next. We are now about to install Mumble Server. Set Mumble Server so that it automatically um, starts on boot. And we are going to assign a, a super user password. And we're also going to assign a password for the actual Pi itself. So let's do this in the right order. This has now brought up the, uh, the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to change user password. Now this is the master password for the Pi. So it'll ask you, enter a new password for Unix. So I'm going to enter my password. Retype it please. So I'm going to type it in again. Password changed successfully. So we've now got a super user password set up for the Pi. The, when you've done that, pretty much, uh, that's you finished. I don't think there's anything else we need to do here. So we will go down and we will press finish. This brings us to a command prompt window. So now what we want to do is we want to install Mumble. But the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go sudo, which is super user do. Uh, that's what it stands for. And it basically means you're running it, running whatever you're about to, whatever command you're about to put in at the highest privileges. So we're going to go apt hyphen get, and then we're going to go update. And then this is going to get all the latest updated updates for the, uh, the Pi itself. So this should take about another minute. Just downloading all the latest packages and it'll install them. So this will help ensure that our Pi is at the latest version that it can be. Takes a minute. So using the magic of the internet, I'll just uh, skip this to the point of where it's finished. Okay, now that that's done, um, this brings us back to a command prompt window. So now what we want to do is we want to install Mumble Server. It's called Murmur, but for the purpose of this, it's actually called Mumble Server. So we're going to type in sudo super user do um, apt uh, get space, this keyboard's got a sticky space bar, install mumble hyphen server so what's that doing what that is doing now is it's going away it's getting mumble um downloading it for us after this operation 21.1 meg of additional disk space will be used do you want to continue so we press yes so now it goes away it downloads it it installs it and then, yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's doing a lot of this for us. This is fairly easy. This should only take, I'm not going to fast forward this bit because it only takes a minute. Might as well do another shout out for myself. Don't forget, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. You've got any questions?
Although I think I've been pretty thorough with this, you can't really go wrong as long as you follow my instructions to the letter. I will put all of the required commands in the description. So if you're going, why I can't really see what he's typing in there, just look in the description. They're in there. So at the minute it's just unpacking everything that it's downloaded. I was just setting it up, just doing the final part of it. Okay, so that is Mumble installed. Now what we need to do is we need to type in sudo space uh, dpkg package and then it's a hyphen reconfigure. Terrible typing on this keyboard, but reconfigure space mumble hyphen server and then this will launch the configuration utility for mumble which is a fairly simple and straightforward utility okay question number one do you want mum mum uh, do you want mumble to automatically start when the pi is loaded when the pi is first booted up so every time you turn the pi on it will start mumble so yes we want that Mumble can use a higher process and network priority to ensure low latency audio forwarding even on highly loaded servers. Do you want Mumble to use higher priority? Well, considering this this Pi is the only thing that this, uh, we're saying as Mumble is the only thing that this Pi is going to be used for, we'll say yes. Murma has a special account called Super User, which bypasses all privilege checks. If you set a password here, the password for super user will be updated. If you leave this blank, the password will not be changed. So we are setting a special password here, which is kind of like the master account for Mumble. So let us type it in here. Then OK. And there we go. So super user is set up on Mumble now. And Mumble is actually live and running. So if we type in if config, this will bring us up our IP information. Now we're looking here at inet address, um, inet address four, which is um, on Ethernet zero. So we can see that it is 192.168.1.104. That's the IP address of this Pi. So what I should be able to do here is I'm actually on Mumble at the minute. Uh, Sean's here as well. Hello, Sean. Oh. Hello. Sean, what I'm about to do for the viewers at home after I'm typing loads of fives in the chat box, <laughs> I'm actually going to log out of this Mumble server, which is my the Mumble server that I talk to everybody on. And I'm going to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So we disconnect from here. We go to connect. We make a new connection. And we're going to call it Pi. There's already one there called Pi, but um, that's because I tested this before. So we're going to call it YouTube. going to call it YouTube Pi as in like pie that you eat. Now in address we are going to put in the address of the Raspberry Pi which is 192.168.1.104 
Now, if we connect as super user, here we go, we can see it. So we're going to connect and a username, super user. Warning, you don't have a certificate, that's okay. Aha! It said wrong password. So now we can put in our password from before. And we are now in the Pi server as a super user. And we can begin to do stuff like right click and add. And we can add channel called uh, chat room one. Um, and then we can go into the chat room. And we are in Mumble now. Um, what we can do is we can go to, uh, not configure settings, but we can right click on the chat room, press edit, and we can give people abilities to do stuff. But basically that, that's us into Mumble now. We can do whatever we like. So that is our Mumble server pretty much set up. We can do now while we're logged in remotely as super user we can do anything we can add new users we can add new channels but that is proof that this raspberry pi is now up and running as a raspberry pi mumble server okay so let's just forget about the fact that it's up and running for the minute and we're going to head back to the pi now we've set up our pi we've set up mumble We've tested it and it works. And we've connected to Mumble from an external PC um, that's on the same network. So what we need to do now is we need to set the Pi so that it has a static IP address. Now the reason for this is because you're going to have to set a port forward and you have to port forward the router's port, which uh, you need to port forward port 6 Four seven three eight, which is the default port for Mumble, so that when external PCs connect to your router, they are forwarded to the correct machine. Now, one second, I'm just going to log into my router. Going to hide this for a second. So, so this port here at the moment, this is the port for Mumble. On forwarding, you would add a new port forward, or in this case, I've already made one. So I would click modify, and then if I change this to a four, then it would mean that when people connect to Mumble, it will go to the Raspberry Pi instead. So. The problem that we have is, is that at the minute, the Pi is set to dynamically receive an IP address. So that means that sometimes if the router gives the Pi a different IP address, then this will be pointing to the wrong address, the port forward. And so we need to ensure that the Pi is always on 104. So that if we change this to 104, that the Pi will never change IP address. So in order to do that, we need to make it static. So, let me just bring up the Pi screen. In order to do this, we need to enter a few more commands. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to type cat etc. Uh, network interfaces oops what have I done wrong there cat etc network interfaces ah, that's because I typed two ears in there tell you this keyboard's a pain in the ass. okay so as you can see here's some information on the uh, current state of the Pi's network connection 
Um, to change this, we need to go sudo s u d o uh, i f config, and we need to note down the IP address, the broadcast, and the mask on where it says ETH Ethernet zero. The line but line number two, you can see INET address 192.168.1.104 broadcast 192.168.1255 and the mask is 255.255.255.0 so we need to write that down somewhere um, next up we need to find out what the gateway is so the gateway is the router so we go sudo root dash nee enter and we can see that the gateway is 192.168.1.1. So we need to write that down as well. So next thing we need to type in, we need to type in sudo uh, nano spacebar sticking and it's really annoying. ETC network interfaces spell it properly this time and what this does is it brings up a text editor and this is basically all of our network configuration so we need to remove this bit we need to remove this bit which is DHCP because we don't want it to have a DHCP address we want it to have a static address and we want to type in the following I face uh, eth zero inet static and then press enter and then we want net mask. This bar is fucking annoying. 255.255.255.0. Actually, no, we need to put in our address first. So our address will be uh, 192.168.1.1. So 192.168.1.104 is going to be our permanent PIES IP address. Okay. Uh, so the net mask is 255.255.255.0. Uh, the broadcast is going to be. Broadcastle. Broadcast. Is gonna be one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot two five five and the gateway is our root as IP address which is one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. There is actually a network address which needs to go in here so the network is our network address is 192.168.1.0 I think that should be it so we save this file by pressing ctrl and x and then saying yes to modifying changes um, and then we just press return and then as you can see it's just wrote the lines in there so you can reboot the pi by pressing typing in sudo reboot so the pi is going to reboot now and hopefully hopefully if all is good when the pi reboots my PC should reconnect to it.
So let's see what happens. Come on, Pi, you can do it. I believe in you. All right, so as you can see, Mumble has restarted automatically, which is wonderful. We now need to log back into the Pi. Now, our username is Pi, and our password is whatever you set your password to earlier on in the video. In the video. When you set your Linux username up earlier on. So, if we type in ifconfig, We can see that our address is in fact still 192.168.104, which is lovely. So it means it's now set there as a static IP address. To be honest, the only thing you really need to do now is um, set your DNS settings so that it is. Uh, I like to use Google's public DNS servers. So in order to do the in order to do that, you type in sudo space uh, slash etc slash uh, resolve dot conf. Press return. Oh, what the hell? Sudo no no no. All right. Ah, no, it's silly me. It's sudo nano because you want to edit it. Sudo nano conf. Um, and then you can type in name server space. I wish I wouldn't do that. My space bar sticking eight point eight point eight point eight. Um, and then you can press enter and you can type in name. Put names, do you put a space in or not? We'll see. Name, try space name server 8.8.4.4.7. 8 so that's the primary and the secondary name servers for uh, Google. Just control and X. Yes. Enter. Wrote two lines. And that is pretty much it. Um, yeah, I don't read that. That is, is that's all you need to do. So now you've got a Mumble Pi server, and yeah, pretty much that's all there is to it. I'm gonna get rid of this. So this is now your server, and back on your Router, you've just set your router's port forward into 104, so that now points to the Pi. All is good in the world. And you can pretty much do everything else remotely now, because you can remote into the server. Um, you can set up your users and everything else. So that is pretty much it. I'm sorry if, the, if you were expecting something more complicated. Uh, that brings me to the end, so I just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you've got any tips or anything like that, comments, likes, throw them into the mix. My name is Big C902 and from TeamSEO.com and thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time.